What's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're gonna try something a bit different, and I don't know, this is something we really had, I think, back during uh, what we called 2021 season. But we are gonna try Gruel Trample today. We have some quirky little combos and things that kind of work, so we'll see what happens and see what we can turn it into and see if it's any good. Also, before we get started, remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, but importantly, hit that subscribe button to help us reach 10,000 subscribers by February 1th. We are so close, so close, but I need your help. Just hit the button. Once you do that, we'll go take a look at this gruel trample beast creatures thing. <laughs> All right, so starting at the top, we're going to be playing some Elysian carry to, uh, mostly because we're playing so many big creatures that there's a lot of time this is just going to tap for the two mana. Playing a couple of ram throughs because we're going to have a lot of things with trample. Realistically, we should probably have four ram throughs by being greedy and trying to find room for everything else. That being said, by the end of the video, I might come back to say, hey, let's just play that fourth ram through. Got Wolf Willem Haven. I, I thought this initially was going to be... A Lotus Cobra spot, but the more I thought about it, with there being so much early removal and easy ways to get rid of it, this is a lot harder to kill. So you can get this on two and still jump to four and have a couple of quality plays. So we're going to see how that logic holds. Obviously, Bone Crusher Giant, not a lot to talk about there. Garrick's Harbinger. This is one where I kind of want to play four of, but again, I'm just a little tight for space. But it helps us find cards against the control matchups. Most of the good removal right now is black, so this also protects you from that. So it's doing a few different things here, and it is a 4 power for 3 mana, so we can't really complain about that too much. So lots of good things happening there. Also, Garrick's Uprising, because if we're going to be playing Trample or give everything Trample, why not? We'll get some extra cards out of the deal. Leyline Tyrant, uh, this is a 4-4 four four that does have Trample in case we need it. I guess maybe against Rogues it could matter. Uh, but... This does oftentimes get to kill a creature on the way out or deal three or four damage to the opponent. The other cool thing is, if you play this on turn, say, four or five, and you have extra mana, well, then you're immediately jumping to playing two big spells the next turn, which is also very beneficial. We're playing four Gym Razors. One, because it gets rid of a lot of problem cards. Two, because it tramples. And three, it has reach which is great against rogues. So this gives us quite a few things we could do against rogues, by the way. We could ram through, we can bone crush giants, kill things, we can play leyline tyrants, and gym razors should just throw stuff in the way. So hopefully we have enough threats that it'd be hard for them to kind of like dance around all of them. Uh, we have Terror of the Peaks, also another big flyer, another finisher. Now this is kind of a fun combo in this deck with Quartzwood Crasher, Terror of the Peaks, uh, Garrick's Uprising. Like you can... Get in with things with Trample, get a big thing, Terror of the Peaks, steal some extra damage, all good there. And then we have four turn Timber Symbiosis, because getting any of these parts where we get a Terror to get things in play, get a Quartzwood Crasher to get a big finisher, there's a lot of different things we could do there with this particular card. Now I will say one of the things I considered playing that's not in here is I almost played a Morale, which I might actually come back to doing, maybe in place of one Quartzwood Crasher. Not totally sure on that yet, but it might actually be the right play. Matter of fact, you know what? For entertainment purposes, we're going to get that morale in there. Why not? I'm, I don't know if we're ever going to draw it. I have no idea, but you know what? It's in there now. Let's just do it, right? If we're going to do it, let's just go all the way, right? Uh, the rest is just pretty basic. we got four mountains, six forest, four the pathway, two temple abandon, and four fabled passage. Uh, it's arguable that because we don't want as many lands coming into play tapped, maybe we should cut those and just go to an extra each of a mountain and a forest. That's probably actually better for us. So I'm going to do that instead. All right. Uh, we do have a sideboard for it. Pretty basic. Uh, Dragonfire spinners uh, to use against like the control matchups here. Uh, any of the mono blue stuff. Scavenging ooze for any graveyard abilities. Uh, base decks. A couple of wilts also you can bring in against control fights. Harbinger, if you're up against something that's heavy black, so you have more things that are hard to kill. And then Questing Beast, because you need those against control matchups to play after Board Sweepers, or even to possibly try to kill an Ugin, which is good for that too. But anyway, I think that's it. Let's go out and do the arena. See what happens. Alright, I guess we'll... 
I mean, uh, sure, we'll keep. This is a pretty bad keep, though. Oh, that makes it worse. Acquisitions expert, you can have a mountain. That just lets you know how much land we have. Quite a bit too many. Good news is, if this Carrington lives, we can actually, like, play Bone Crusher straight up. Well, it's not gonna live. That solves that. And that question got answered. I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Don't know what type of discard shenanigans are up to, or if that's just randomly in there. This could also be some type of party deck. So, don't... With that, since I don't know what's happening, I'm just gonna try to play it safe here for a bit. Wolf Willow Haven, you are not a bad choice here. Sure. Not gonna play the giant yet. Gonna kinda see what the opponent's up to. Alright. Let's go ahead and just shoot this. Oh, they're just cycling. All right. I feel like this is some type of weird controlish build, and it's not what I thought it was when it started. Oh, that's cute. Don't think that's the real answer we're looking for, but it's nice. All right. I'm going to keep Morag in hand. Oh, wait. I need another land anyway. Oh, no, I don't. I have Carrioted. Never mind. Oh, and a brood moth. Blah, that sucks. Well, um, okay. I mean, uh, do we though? Do we though? Really? I don't know. I think we just wait. Let's see what the opponent's up to first. Because we might be able to get some extra value where they, like, try to play another apparition to kill our Bone Crusher Giant. Alright. Well, they're not going to bite. Alright. What you got for me, opponent? They didn't have a removal card in response to us playing the ram through either. So, yeah, I was going to say, their hand has to be just creatures. Well, I guess it could be enchantments. So they didn't have anything to play during the attack step. Oh, Charming Prince. That's annoying. Riverland enters the battlefield. If it's her main phase, there's an additional factor. All right, well, we basically just tell the opponent, hey, there's going to be an extra attack step. Uh, no attack with this one? Oh, I have to do that afterwards. At the beginning of your next step. Untap. I have to do it. Attack, then do it, then untap. Sorry. I did waste an opportunity there. Which is a big deal. Because we missed a chance to get some damage in. And I could have reused Harbinger, Harbinger action there. And I didn't. Uh, however, this does make things a little more interesting. At least. Because now, an apparition token doesn't even have anything to get.
Then we can play our Harbinger behind it. They bought them both. They're at 15. Oh, because it's four or less. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I thought it was three or less. But that's okay. We'll lead with that anyway. All right, cultivate's a good thing. Now if we find a land, it's kind of game on. Because we'll just attack with everything, then we get a big bonus attack. Yeah, I mean, you can't afford to attack your opponent. You're probably going to even have to double block something to stay alive here. Oh, that is real bad for them. That is real bad. Yeah, if we just kill Broodmoth here? I mean, I don't even think we care. We just let them block, and then wherever they put the double block, we'll just kill that defender. Cause, or maybe we still kill Broodmoth. I don't know. That's probably what's going to end up happening. No, you gotta throw something in front of the Harbinger opponent. That's the thing you should be trying to kill. Bone Crusher Giants. Nowhere near that bad. Well, this is pretty fantastic. And we're gonna get to see five cards from the Harbinger? Well, I guess Harbinger plus Morale is kind of a combo, too. Uh, sure? I mean, I just don't want to lose anything. Oh, yeah. We'll take that for sure. But that should do it. Oh, uh, mulligan this one. This is significantly better. We will uh, probably put back that Quartzwood Crasher. I think that's what we want to do. All right, then obvious plays. We're just going to play Karyatid probably into... Well, we'll play Karyatid into Tyrant if we get lucky. If not, we'll just play a Harbinger. Uh, Harbinger is actually probably the better call anyway, looking at like what we're up against. But it's going to partly come down to also if we draw land, right? If we draw another land and we think we could use the Leyline Tyrant, then, uh, hmm... I think here we go ahead and cast Leyline Tyrant anyway. If they have a counter or something to it, that's fine. We'd rather that than this, because this is going to be harder for them to deal with, ultimately. Alright, Thought Thief it is. Probably a kill card for our Tyrant here. Which would make a lot of sense. Heartless Act on Delivery. There is not a Heartless Act. What? Oh, our big creatures are coming through then. Well, what do we do here? My initial instinct was just play Harbinger. But now, I don't know. Because being able to double Bone Crusher... A Soaring Thought Thief is kind of excellent. I think we attack. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else they're going to do here. Oh, they didn't have anything. Dang it. I thought they were going to end of turn Thought Thief. Ugh. So gross. I really thought they had something. I thought they were going to get us there. Okay. That's a reasonable setup for them. Blood Chief's Thirst. Let's go ahead and get double red out of that. Sure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this opportunity. Shoot that. Oh, why did it use both more? I have to declare the mana we want to use a little better here when we have this out. Because I would definitely much rather have floated 
two red into the next turn. Well, another Tyrant doesn't hurt against rogues. We'll take that. Uh, and again, I think we'll leave the free mana. And just tell the opponent, okay, cool. You're going to have to find a way to deal with these dragons. All right, we're going to float another mana. Uh, do we just attack? What's the opponent want to do? Yeah, I mean, you're 12. You got to do something. If they kill a tyrant, then we'll just kill a thought thief, I guess. <laughs> One, two, three. Give him something to counter, I suppose. Sure. Why did it... Oh, well. It's alright. They have to find something to deal with their tyrants here. I should definitely have had more mana available at this point, though. So I could burn them for more. All right, sure. You get a Zarasan? Still a Tyrant, I suppose. And then you have a kill card for this one? Oh no, Wind Robber. Okay, that makes sense. Well, isn't that special? Yeah, see, it's the other point, if we'd have had that extra mana sitting there, we'd be able to play this and this, and I'd feel a lot better right now. But for now, I guess I'm just gonna do this. We know it's in the opponent's hand, so. Draw a thing to kill the terror, or they're dead. Yep, that's GG's. I mean, they already know we have a Bone Crusher Giant. That's not true. I guess they could draw if there's a kill card on top. They could win Robber. Yeah, you're just dead. Okay. Yeah, so basically, this is the type of deck that when you're playing, you're definitely going to want to use full control, just so you can determine, like, what mana it's spending or not. You know, when we have the... Um, dragons out there. Uh, this one, when we're going second here, I think we're already in trouble. Yeah, we'll just play this. If they have a kill card, they have a kill card. Alright, seems fine. This is where we want to draw a Harbinger. Though, if they don't have... I was going to say, if you don't have a Thought Thief, that just means you have the other thing in Yard, so... Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter what we would have played last time. I guess if I'd have been really forward thinking and next leveled, we probably could have uh, Wolf Willow Havened first. Let that get countered. I mean, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this mana next turn. I don't have double red, so we're really just playing a Gem Razor and hoping that's good enough, but I don't think it's going to be. really need to be able to play two things this turn. Even if it's just... I carried it, I would take that. Uh, that unfortunately does not meet our needs. I think we are dead. Uh, two, four, five, six. Yeah, they're just not going to be a good combination here. I mean, we'll just let them kill it or counter it. And then we'll just GG's. Didn't draw any of our cheaper things. That's what we really needed here. Wow, 
don't know what's taking him so long. Either counter to kill it. I only have one mana open. <laughs> I'm only at 12. You have 8 power on the table opponent. Come on. Thank you. GG's. Let's move along. Goodness gracious. I don't think we can get by with this. This is a little better. And since it's an unknown opponent, I think that's what we're going to do. Well, I don't know if that's good or bad that I got rid of that Gym Razor yet. Oh, well, the deck kind of rewarded me and gave me one anyway. But that's also why we play four. Alright, that's good news. It means we're at least going to get to resolve the Wolf Willow Haven. So we'll go ahead and play that. So we did at least get to secure three mana going into next turn. Regardless of if we draw a land or not. Though we did find a land. Uh, I'm going to go with this. My opponent didn't counter. Though they might Brazen Borrower. Which I could totally see that. No, they didn't. Okay, so there was a weird pause. Then they looked at the card, they read it, but then didn't do anything. Is this just Teamer Ramp? And they were debating if they wanted to uh, use a borrower? Because otherwise I'm a little perplexed, if I'm being 100% honest. Let's see how the opponent feels about this. Alright, they're saying it's okay. I mean, if Borrower's their play, then fine. They take two targeting a Bone Crusher Giant. Alright, we'll get a card. It does come into play. Ooh, Harbinger. We like that. Yep, that's what it was. Interesting choice, but uh, okay. So now that the opponent knows we have this, I'm going to go ahead and lead with that. See if they want to counter it this time. Because in their world, they might just figure, hey, I'm going to time walk this guy. Go ahead and get red. And then I'm just going to be mana efficient here. Alright, disruption. Totally fine. Uh, I'd rather that than some of the stuff we're going to be trying to do here in the next couple turns. They also didn't play the Brazen Borrower yet. Hmm. There are things going on here that I'm not understanding. Maybe I'm just simply not meant to understand. Alright, well let's try Harbinger. See what the opponent wants to do. And yes, I could have played Terror of the Peaks first. I'm sort of trying to figure out what counters the opponent is playing and or why. Alright, you're going to Shark Typhoon for four. And just trade there. Alright, I'm game. I'll take a card. I mean, I'd rather these both not be odd, but they're not playing any black they haven't shown us yet. So, yep, yeah, looks like that's going to do it. Oh, we get to go first. Sadly, we have to mulligan this. That was just going to be too much work to get where we needed to go. Uh, keep this. Probably, uh, man. I, I'm going to at least keep Moragat's a creature. I don't love it, but 
Maybe it helps us get where we're going. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Don't know what all the opponent's doing yet, but maybe we'll find out. Okay, well... Let's just attack. Because they're playing black, I don't necessarily... And white, for that matter. I don't necessarily want to just put a Gym Razor on a Karyatid right out the gate here. I feel like that could have uh, trapped us a little bit. Whoa, there was no counter there. What? Alright. Like, well, hmm. If this lives, that's two, three, four, five, six. One more would be seven. Uh, I'm going to gamble, put it into play tap. I don't think this Tyrant's going to live. We'll end up having to play Moralg or something next turn. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't make sense. There was no way those were going to survive. Couldn't do much, though, when I had a bunch of even cost in hand anyway. Alright, they have a Teferi. Time is Ideas like seconds are fleeting. Oh, well, this is the only thing we can play. Not enough red mana here. Time to improvise. Come on, red land. Well, it's not a red land, but we'll see what happens. Oh, all right. You ever listen to the crickets? That's my kind of music. All right, we need things that get us multiple things in play here quickly. Think fast. That might do it. I mean, this Terror of the Peaks also has not died to like eighty things, so let's be honest, it's it's not the best situation. All right. Ah, I was hoping like maybe we find a creature and then like just hit Garrick even for one, but yeah, we're we're just dead. Okay, this looks like a keeper. If we don't get another land, we're going to cry. Actually, even if we get one, it's probably not enough. But you know, Got to make do with what you got sometimes. Well, that at least helps. I would have liked to have had that turn one, though. Because now we're going to be just a little bit off of what we like to do. Unless the opponent has another ETB land. And we'd like that to enter the battlefield tap, but it does not. Okay, well, we just had a Bone Crusher Giant. And that uh, is okay. Ooh, this does create a mana situation, though. Do we... play... Hmm. I kind of want a Gym Razor. But I also kind of want a Wolf Willow Haven. I think... Uh, that doesn't really work either, though. Tap, tap, put that there. Man, this just not being out on turn one is a real problem. But I think we want Wolf Willow Haven regardless for next turn, so here goes. Don't love it, but is what it is. I guess that we could have... No, that doesn't work either. Every way I would have been one mana short of doing what I wanted to do. All right. Let's go ahead and fish up a uh, red mana. So if this character dies along the way, we'll be all right. Let's go ahead and shoot this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just play Gargaroth here. Put this in tapped. And the reason I'm doing that is... And, and is when I attack with Gargaroth, I can make a 3-3 three, three and then still hit something with Terror. 
I also up up to the door, so I have like one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I get one more, I can actually. Well, well, that's not a bad thing either. All right, so we can tear. We can attack. Make a three, three. Oh, what? I I uh, clicked the wrong thing. I'm an idiot. Sure. We'll shoot the token. Alright. Well, sadly, the opponent should be at 3 less life. And I should have a 3-3 attacking next turn. We'll see if I can survive even without that. And the dumb mistake. Opponent has access to 6 mana. Probably 7 if they draw land here. Yep. So, they could go with their big ultimatum if they have one. Nope. Alright, so we're not, despite the mistake, we're not in bad shape. Because we can get rid of a Great Hinge here. Kill their Lovestruck Beast before they really do anything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, we can't do what I want to do. So, the trade-off will be simply... Play this under. Destroy that. And we will attack. One, two, three. They could just play that, so we don't want to do that just yet. I mean, maybe we should trade for Lovestruck Beast. The problem is, if we get another land, I could just kill it with these. So we're not really that incentivized. However, now they got the other land, they're going to play a Beanstalk Giant. So it kind of changes all that. Anyway, we may just send this at the opponent's head. Well, we definitely will now that we got Terror of our own. Kill that one. Uh, Yeah, now we do it. And we make that 3-3, which we should have had another 3-3 already attacking. All right. What do we got, opponent? All right, cool. All right, now let me tell you all why we made those changes at the end there. Playing Gargaroth actually has a lot more value because more often than not, let's assume you don't have a whole pile of creatures out with the Quartzwood Crasher, because usually if you do, you've just won from attacking anyway. So, so when we get to talking about making the creature, the token, a lot of times your opponent chump blocks anyway, so you're only making a token between two and four power regardless, whereas Gargaroth's gonna make a three power creature anyway. But Gargaroth also costs one less mana, it's also a 6-6, six, six, and it can block flyers, which is also important. This helps you in a lot more matchups and lets you block, say, against Something like rogues, almost half of your creatures can block flyers, which is pretty pretty big deal against Soaring Thought Thief. So that's why I made the change there. Overall, I think the deck's actually pretty solid. If you make those changes and play the way, I would say there's an argument to maybe it should just be playing a couple of Ember Cleaves and just try to finish that way. So maybe a couple of Ember Cleaves make their way into the list. But yeah, if you want to play a different style of gruel, it's something different to do. But I think that last game kind of showed you the difference in why Gargaroth is important there versus being Quartzwood Crasher. Now for our card spotlight, we're gonna talk about a land today and it's Strip Mine. Man, and the reason I bring Strip Mine up is I think for those of you who didn't have to play way back when, Strip Mine was a super annoying magic card. When you're talking about land kill decks and this thing just being able to kill anything, it's ridiculously good. It is super good. Uh, I, you won't see a land destruction card like that again in the future. It's the reason why everything says non-basic or has some other caveat on what you can actually kill. But strip mines still go for a little bit. If you have any of the old black border ones, uh, look them up. You might get a pretty penny. And remember, if you haven't, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, help us get to 10,000 subscribers by February 1th. And as always, if you want this deck list or you want to visit my sponsors or get merchandise or come join us in the Discord or come watch us on Twitch, 
you can get the links to all those down below. And remember, if you shop on TCG Player or Amazon and you click one of those links, even if you don't buy what's linked, as long as you shop within 24 hours, I'll get a little kickback. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.